Now, there's a very interesting editorial in today's Sydney Morning Herald, which offers a warning about the dangers of hubris. I hate that word. It's a fancy word. It just means overconfidence. It's issuing a warning to Anthony Albanese. Now, we in Australia are saddled with this notion of a voice to parliament. Put simply, alter the constitution to incorporate race. That was once called apartheid. I made reference last week to what's happening in New Zealand. And I'll come to that in a moment. But the editorial in today's Sydney Morning Herald refers to the New Zealand Prime Minister Ardern, whom I've always regarded as out of her depth. But as the editorial says today, quote, in July, Ardern was shown around the world, shaking the hand of former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and was described by a branding specialist. Don't you like that? I've no idea what they are, branding specialist, as having, quote, cleverly attracted international acclaim during her time as PM, making her a great political brand, unquote. Ardern, that is. The editorial goes on, but as her international renown has grown, her popularity with New Zealand has rapidly declined. Ardern, it says, has done little to deal with her country's housing affordability crisis and the cost of living. New polling suggests that New Zealand's right-leaning coalition has enough support to form government, and Ardern's polling is at its lowest level since she became Prime Minister in 2017. I should point out that in 2017, Ardern and Labor got 37% of the vote. Bill English and the Nationals got 44%, but she became Prime Minister. I made reference last week about this race issue and a voice to the Parliament about which we know not much, except that a certain group of people would have a voice and they would be Indigenous Australians. Though if you're born here, you are Indigenous, aren't you? But no one else would be allowed to vote. Well, I mentioned in New Zealand the Ardern government under a three waters plan seeking to confiscate the water assets of New Zealand's 67 councils and hand their governance to an equal number of unelected tribal members. Asset confiscation. Well, Winston Peters, Peters has had an extraordinary political career in New Zealand. He is of mixed parentage, his father being a Maori and his mother of Scottish descent. He entered the New Zealand Parliament for the first time in 1979, which is 43 years ago. He became Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer in coalition with the National Party after the 1996 election. Several years later, he formed government with the Labor Prime Minister, Helen Clark, and served as Minister for Foreign Affairs. After the 2017 election, his party, New Zealand First, held the balance of power and formed a coalition government with Jacinda Ardern, and Winston Peters became Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs. He left New Zealand politics following the 2020 election, but he's recently made an extraordinary speech which should resonate with Australians and particularly our New Zealand viewers. He delivered the speech last month in Warkworth, which is about 64 kilometres north of Auckland, titled Co-Governance is Not Democracy. And he said, quote, recent political developments in New Zealand are of grave concern to all those who believe in democracy, freedom and the rule of law. Winston Peters joins me. Winston, thank you for your time on this very, very important issue. We've got elements of this at work in this country. You have said that, quote, recent political developments are justifiable cause for alarm at where our country's democracy is heading. Can you just amplify that point? Well, I perhaps can best describe what happened in South Africa, where they strove to get rid of apartheid and to have a unified government, and also talk about the American Civil Rights Movement, where the black people sought to access the best white institutions. These were pathways where, in the end, the unity and working together was the objective, and it's difficult to get there. But in New Zealand, we're heading down the very reverse path towards apartheid, towards separatism, towards asset ownership based on race, and the very ownership in that uh, system will not be the Maori people owning it, but an elite in the Maori people out of control and out of uh, being accountable.